And with Super Bowl 50 now less than a week away and the Lions undergoing major restructuring in hopes of finally getting to one someday themselves. A pleasure to welcome back now for a 15th straight year here on Sports Overtime, former Lion, Jaguar, Bear, and of course, Michigan State Spartan Ty Halleck. Been too long. Uh, nice to see you, my friend. Thanks for coming in. Uh, it's great to be here. Always good to be talking football, All for right. sure. Well, let's start with the Lions because obviously this is the biggest change we've seen in maybe the 15 years, obviously, that uh, you've been with us here on Sports Overtime. Starts with Bob Quinn. Were you happy with that, with that decision and, you know, your thoughts on it? You know, I, I think I'm really very happy with that because I think at the end of the day, when you start making the changes that they made at the top, the one thing you wanted to see is for them to go somewhere where there has been very consistent success. And Bob Quinn, quite frankly, has grown up in one of the best National uh, Football League franchises in the New England Patriots for the last 14 or 15 years. So he's had plenty of opportunities in that front office to learn a lot about football and how it's run and how to get and develop players. And I think ultimately, Bob Quinn is a great, great pick for the Detroit Lions and their organization because of that winning lineage he's, he comes from. Yeah, and he's added some more pieces as well. I wanted to ask about Jim Caldwell, and the first thought was, well, you played for a player's coach. How important was it for the players to keep him? But maybe that's not even the bottom line with hiring Jim Caldwell, just a smart business decision? I think it's a smart business decision, and here's why. You keep consistency for another year, and Bob Quinn, as, as much as he may know about football and winning ways in organizations, knows that stability is pretty good too, and he's got to come in and learn not only his players, but he's got to learn the coaches, the, the front office staff. He's continuing to assemble his staff to make sure that they get, hopefully, to the consistent winning ways that they're looking to do. I think a very, very smart move on his part. Jim Caldwell's a good, solid coach. They finished the second half very strong. The task will be to make sure they carry that forward going into next year with a much better schedule, I think, in most people's opinions. And I think when he does that and he allows him for some of that growth at any time, it can be very, very quick for Bob Quinn to make a, a change or if he wants to go to get a guy that he already knows he may plan on coming, right. he's got a year to kind of settle into that role. I think it's a smart business decision. And if you were in that scenario, like I said, with, with, with having Wayne there, does it mean a lot to the players to get a guy, okay, they're keeping the guy that most of us really like to have? Well, I think so. And I, I think because you, when you bring in somebody, you know there's going to be changes across the board anyways. And as a player, you know there's still going to be changes here. But with Jim Caldwell being in a position, probably a little less change out of the gates, Again, I think a great and brilliant move for Bob Quinn because he's going to be able to sit there and help with that process and see how he works with uh, Jim Caldwell as well. All right, big news today, obviously, Calvin Johnson. I don't want to ask you what you think is going to happen because nobody really knows. But, Calvin, just your thoughts on what is going on with Calvin right now and, you know, what may happen. Well, I think Calvin Johnson is the premier wide receiver in the National Football League. There's a lot of good ones, but there's not one that as, uh, is as imposing on, on opponents than Calvin Johnson. And the fact that he's been nicked up and dinged up over the last couple of years and the seasons haven't went the way they wanted in terms of the winning tough loss at the end of last year, this particular year, they bounced back in the second half, but he's, he's struggled consistently with injuries. I think it's the modern day of, of, of football, quite frankly. I think a lot of these guys now, having made a lot of money like him, are going to start to really evaluate, do I really need that 10th year? Do I need the 11th, 12th, whatever it is? Everybody's got different uh, scenarios that they go through. But I will say this, it is a huge hole to fill, and hopefully he gets his rest. He gets himself kind of rejuvenated here. He hasn't ultimately made a decision. There's a report maybe he, he's thinking certain ways, but my hope and prayer would be is that he comes back at least for a 10th football season because it's such a void if he doesn't come right. back. But certainly understand it with the money he's made and how long he's yeah. been in the league and also injuries, uh, it does take a toll on you. And I think players look at it a little bit different today than they have in the past. Yeah, that's a great point, especially with all the, the you know, how conscious everybody is about head injuries, et cetera. Uh, that would change the draft dramatically. Um, if, say, let's just say for the sake of argument, he does stay. Is it the offense and defensive line? Is that where they've got to go with this first pick? I still think it's offensive line, personally. I think you got, if there's the right guy defensive line as well, they'd have to go there. But it is all about the upfront folks. He will, if he decides to retire, or even the fact that if he comes back for another year, let's, let's face this, Calvin Johnson is no spring chicken. They need other younger receivers right. coming into the fold anyways. So that still will remain something for them, again, based on what players available at their particular point in the draft. But I still think the, the longevity of this football team, you still got a very good quarterback. It's, the, it's really, to me, the offensive line is the number one priority, in my opinion, followed by the defensive line and maybe another playmaker on defense. Yeah. But certainly, Kelvin Johnson's decision ultimately, I think, forces their hand if the right players uh, there to be had at receiver, they're going to have to do it. All right, before you get out of here, big game, obviously, next Sunday. 
Peyton Manning, uh, is it his last game? And who do you like in this game? Or, you know, is, is Carolina the team to beat? Is that a better way to put it? Sure. I, I think Carolina is the team to beat, and I think it's because their quarterback, Cam Newton, is playing as well as anybody in the National Football League and certainly uh, makes a very interesting statement with his size, the strength of his arm, his ability to run, all the things he can do that allow him to pull it back and show that he is <laughs> Superman. He has done that. I think Carolina is definitely the team to beat. However, the Denver Broncos win this football game through their defense first, and if Peyton Manning has a good, solid game in his in his last game, in my opinion, in the National Football League, I, I don't see him coming back yeah. for another season. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Hey, thanks so much for coming in tonight. We missed having you around here, my friend, and uh, looking forward to another good Lions season. Always love being on what TV. All right. Thanks, Ty.